let's take a look at how we can best set up our thesis for the least amount of effort as we go along, but the most amount of professionality and legibility and general success. To set up our page, the best place we can go is up here on the ribbon. So this area, these menus and all of these settings, they're all part of what Microsoft Word calls the ribbon. Microsoft Word is ideal when it comes to writing your thesis because we can do a lot of complex things with it that are required when you're writing a thesis. In the ribbon, we're going to press the layout option, the layout tab. And in the layout tab, we're going to select margins. So the best place to start whenever you're setting up a document is in the margins. As you can see, Microsoft Word automatically presents us with a series of margins it thinks we might want, but we want to actually make custom margins because this is our thesis after all, and we have to make sure that we're following the university's guidelines. So what are the university's guidelines? The university's guidelines state that the left or the binding side of the document must be no less than four centimeters. So we know that that one has to be quite a specific value. As for the other margins, guidelines simply state that they have to be no less than 1.5 centimeters. So I'm going to make my top and bottom 2.3 centimeters and I'm going to make my right margin two centimeters. You will want to write your thesis in portrait orientation, but you may want some landscape pages in there. As long as you have section breaks, which we will come to in a later video, in a later demo, then that will be absolutely fine. It's important to consider whether or not your department specifies margin sizes that are different to those that I'm showing you now. Also think about whether or not you're going to be printing this thesis or whether you're going to be submitting it online only. Because if you do print it, you'll need to be considering whether or not you're going to print double-sided. If you do print on double-sided, you will need to make sure that you have mirror margins. And if you're happy with that, then click OK. And now you can see already there's a slight change in the composition of this page. If you want to check exactly where you can write, where Microsoft Word will automatically let you write, then simply go into the View tab and you can see here that you can tick the ruler and then suddenly at the top and the side here, you can see the white area where Microsoft Word will let you type without having to sort of change any settings along the way. Something else that we really need to consider putting in at this point, it'll help us keep track of things and it's something we mustn't forget when it comes to printing out or submitting our thesis. That is page numbers. So page numbers are really easy to insert. So we go to the insert tab and then you can see in this header and footer section along here, yours might be slightly different in layout, but there is a page number box here and you can really easily insert page numbers to the bottom of your page. Just select whichever option you think is the best and the most professional. Once you've inserted page numbers, you can see that it opens up this new tab. So this is the design tab specific to your header and footer. This shows us different options that we can insert into our header and footer. You can see that if I scroll up the document, the header area is also open to edit. This is a special screen and you'll see that you can't actually edit anything outside of the header and footer until you click on the close header and footer option. Now I'm back to normal and I can edit anything that I need to. But you can still see that I have my page numbers here if I wanted to slightly change my page numbers, I can go back into my insert tab and into the page number box. And there is this format page numbers option. In this menu, you can change the format of your numbers. So you can choose whether you have letters or Roman numerals or something like that. Uh, and then you can also change whether or not you're starting from a specific number which is quite helpful in certain places. And you can also choose whether or not you continue from a previous section. Remember this dialog box when it comes to section breaks and page breaks, because 
if you're wanting to make your appendices have a different number format to the rest of your thesis, you will need to come back to this particular dialog box and edit them, remembering that you will need a section break between each set of numbers and number formats. While you're having a go at any of the things that you see in these tutorials, please do remember that a really useful tool to see what you have done and what you maybe haven't done is on this home tab. If you look in the paragraph section, there is this tool, which if you hover over it, calls itself the show slash hide tool. Okay, if you turn that on, if you click on it, you can see everywhere where you have a new paragraph. So everywhere that you have pressed the enter button and you can also see where you have page breaks and section breaks. This is really useful and can really help you to stop getting confused in certain places where you might otherwise get confused. To turn it off, you just go back to the paragraph section and click on the show slash hide button once more.